One of the riskiest things a game can do is redesign a main character. There's not a lot to be gained by doing so, and it can alienate the player base because of the change. After all, a beloved character's look will be cemented in players' minds after a game or two, and so to aggressively depart from that threatens to take away one of the key artistic tenets of the series. Though there are certainly redesigns that paid off dividends, as Cyborg Ninja Raiden in Metal Gear Solid 4, Doom Guy in the more recent Doom games, Final Fantasy VII Remake's bangin' version of Tifa, and so on, it's far more common for these aesthetic retoolings to fall flat on their face. I'm Jess McDonald from What Culture, and here are 10 video game character redesigns nobody asked for. Number 10. Crash Bandicoot – Crash of the Titans Upon his 1996 debut, Crash Bandicoot epitomized cool. Though cute to look at, he was a little edgier in the aesthetics department than Mario and Sonic, and became a mascot synonymous with the irreverent, forward-thinking nature of the PlayStation brand. But as the series' popularity began to decline in the late 2000s, developers Radical Entertainment made the desperate decision to give Crash a most bogus makeover for 2000's otherwise not so bad Crash of the Titans. All of the game's major characters were given punk makeovers, and so Crash was left with must up fur and, most hideously, a heinous set of tribal tattoos. Ew. And like that, Crash was transformed from an effortlessly marketable icon into a lame tryhard. Trash Bandicoot, even. Though Crash's tattoos were lightened up for the follow-up, Crash Mind Over Mutant, it wasn't until the Insane Trilogy that he finally felt like his old Bandicoot self again. Number 9. Knuckles the Echidna – Sonic Boom – Rise of Lyric The Sonic franchise is defined by its rollercoaster ride of ups and downs, fans having to live with the anxiety of never knowing if a new game will be basically decent or commit itself to actively butchering aspects of the franchise. There was plenty to complain about in the 2014 Wii U exclusive Sonic Boom – Rise of Lyric, not the least of which is that Knuckles had been turned into a hulking gym rat. Boom Knuckles, as the fanbase calls him, ditched the wiry rail-thin original design, which nevertheless screamed attitude, and reinvented him with comically broad shoulders and 30-inch pythons, which would make Hulk Hogan himself blush. Director Bob Raffi explained in an interview that Knuckles' buff new look was part of a wider initiative to broaden the characters and make them more accessible to a wider audience. But honestly, was mutating Knuckles into a roid gobbling jock ever going to be the way to do this? Clearly not, as Rides of Lyric was critically panned and became the lowest selling entry in the franchise. Yikes. On the flip side, playing as Knuckles allowed players to execute a jump glitch which would let them bypass most of the game and beat it within an hour. Silver linings. Number 8. Dante DMC – Devil May Cry there's perhaps no single character redesign more controversial than the retooling of Dante from Devil May Cry in the 2013 reboot that nobody asked for. And though DMC is a totally respectable entry into the series from a gameplay perspective, many fans found themselves unable to see past Dante's drastic, wildly unnecessary new look. The new Dante ditched the iconic white hair and steely facial features for a more effeminate build and punk-styled aesthetic, which felt like a far directionless cry from the character who made the franchise famous. Though developers Ninja Theory caught most of the flack, the redesign was actually mandated by Capcom higher-ups, who hoped that an emo Dante would help the series appeal to younger audiences. For his part, even the series' original creator Hideki Kamiya was critical of the design. It certainly didn't help the fan reaction to the redesign that at one point in the game a white wig falls onto Dante's head, and he looks straight into the camera and says, Not in a million years. Thankfully, players only had to wait six years in the end for classic Dante to make his return in 2019's rapturously received Devil May Cry 5, which mercifully ignored DMC altogether. Number 7. Vanessa Lewis – Virtua Fighter 5 While most of these character redesigns just sparked a lot of fan outrage, this one really stepped over the mark, as it inspired conversations about representation and whitewashing. In Virtua Fighter 4, Vanessa's skin color was black, only for the sequel to inexplicably bleach her skin to a shade of white. Fans vocally expressed their outrage that a bastion of representation in the fighting game community had been erased. It wasn't just infuriating, it was offensive. Moreover, beyond the skin color change, Vanessa's extremely lean physique was toned down considerably, presumably in order to make her more conventionally appealing to mainstream players. Though fans could technically restore Vanessa's original skin tone in the game's options, the fact that her default look was changed in such a blatant and incendiary way sent out a pretty terrible message to players. 
To call it a bad look is an understatement. Number six, Chris Redfield, Resident Evil 5. The bulky redesign of Chris Redfield in Resident Evil 5 suggests that Capcom saw the success of Sexy Leon's redesign and decided they could do the same for Chris by giving him a weapons-grade cocktail of steroids. The slender Redfield of the earlier games was basically given the Captain America treatment, showing up in the fifth game with arms the size of tree trunks, leading to the infamous late game moment where he punches a boulder into compliance. As trashily enjoyable as Resident Evil 5 was, this really didn't look at all like the Chris fans knew and loved, instead mutating him into a laughably over-designed WWE action figure. This of course wasn't the last time that Capcom would alter Chris's design, and in Resident Evil 7, he received a more realistic overhaul that largely toned down the muscles. But because they apparently can't leave the guys look alone, Chris is again getting the makeover treatment for the upcoming Resident Evil Village, where he's been reimagined with a far stockier build, albeit still seemingly sans muscles. Number 5, Bomberman, Bomberman Act Zero. Was there anyone, even a single soul, who really wanted to see Bomberman redesigned into a battle armor clad super soldier? No. No, I don't think there was. In his original iteration, Bomberman is one of the most adorable and distinctive video game characters of all time, noted for his short, thin limbs and most of all, his TV-shaped head. As a whole, Bomberman Act Zero misguidedly attempted to give the iconic series a dark, gritty reboot, despite it generally being lauded for its colourful simplicity. This extends to Bomberman as a character, who was no longer a cute emblem of classic gaming history, but a personality devoid hunk of junk which couldn't have travelled further further from the developer's original artistic intent. Between the wretched design and the game's general awfulness, Act Zero was panned by critics, and given that sales were never openly reported, we can assume it was a commercial dud to boot. Number 4, Sonya Blade, Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe. Mortal Kombat Sonya Blade is one of the most iconic female video game characters of all time, having been with the series since its inception. Sonya has generally been among the more modestly attired fighting game heroines over the decades, and even in the earlier games tended to wear clothes which would at least pass for practical, sports bras and combat leggings for example. But Netherrealm ditched all that with 2008's Mortal Kombat vs DC Universe, where she was featured in a far more ridiculous and impractical outfit. Sonya's new look switched out her comparatively sensible prior attire for a shirt which barely held anything in, and low-riding jeans which enthusiastically showed off her thong tan line. Oh, and don't forget that silly beret either. It added up to a shockingly tacky redesign for a character who deserved so much better. Thankfully, her recent designs have since skewed decidedly more respectful. Number 3, Spyro, Skylanders, Spyro's Adventure. Spyro is one of the cutest video game mascots out there, an adorable little pint-sized dragon that really appealed to young kids in particular. But for 2011's spin-off game Skylanders Spyro's Adventure, Spyro was given a new look, stripping away the dragon's appealing simplicity and making him instead resemble a snarling, short-snouted abomination. Despite Spyro's Adventure actually being a pretty solid game, for many fans it was simply too difficult to look past the fact that the beloved hero now resembled a genetically modified version of himself. It apparently bothered adults more than kids though, as the game still pulled in gangbusters business regardless, releasing in the midst of the fleeting toys to life craze as it did. Mercifully, Spyro's original design was restored for the Spyro Reignited trilogy, at least. Phew. Number 2, Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Now this one is really baffling. Insomniac's acclaimed 2018 game received a remaster when it arrived on PS5 in the Ultimate Edition, where it's packaged with Spider-Man Miles Morales. Beyond offering sharp new visuals to take full advantage of the PS5's graphical tech, the game also saw Peter Parker's face changed from the original model, John Bubniak, to a new model, Ben Jordan. The official reasoning for this is that Insomniac wanted to find a facial model who more closely resembled voice actor Yuri Lowenthal, allowing them to more easily translate Lowenthal's facial capture onto the new model. However, and perhaps more cynically, a lot of fans have thought that Insomniac made the move to make the character more closely resemble the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Peter Parker, played by Tom Holland, who it does look an awful lot like. Above all else, the PS5 Peter simply looks decidedly more babyface than the PS4 version, which doesn't really vibe with the fact that he's supposed to be a 23-year-old man in the game. In his new iteration, he looks more like a gormless, doe-eyed teenager. 
Number 1. Simon Belmont, Castlevania Judgment Castlevania's much-loved vampire hunting protagonist, Simon Belmont, is also a major mascot for Konami. And in most of his appearances throughout the franchise, as well as a fan-pleasing appearance in Smash Bros. Ultimate, is depicted as a strapping warrior, not unlike Thor. Simon has had makeovers before, but nothing quite so bafflingly kinky as his 2008 redesign for the Castlevania Judgment fighting game. Simon was represented here as a glorified Mad Max reject, clad in black leather garb, complete with customary slits to show off his washboard abs, while also touting needlessly shortened red dyed hair. It's a textbook example of over design, where the developers took things too far and really alienated the fanbase. Ultimately, Judgment was panned by critics and fans alike, who generally felt that Takeshi Obata's character designs drew too eagerly from his illustrations for Death Note. In short, nobody asked for this. Let me know down in that comment section which video game character redesigns really bothered you. I've been Jess for What Culture, and do stay tuned for everything games and entertainment.